Hey everybody, Jeremy here, and this is a dash camera that I got from Timu that I also did a video review on. If you want to see that video review, check the card above or the link in the description so that you can see what the performance of this camera is actually like. But I've also gotten some comments on that video asking if I could explain some of the functions of these buttons down here, because as you can see, there's five of them and the instruction manual that comes with this is pretty bad. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you what all these buttons do so that you can feel a little bit more comfortable using this camera if you want to purchase it. And if you do want to purchase it, the link to where I got it from Timu will be in the description as well. So at this point, I'm going to assume that you've inserted a micro SD card inside of this camera and that you formatted this SD card and that it is good to go. And now we just have a regular black screen on the back and the camera is on. Now looking at these buttons right here from left to right, the first one is going to be the power button. So I'm going to press this and then the camera turns on. So basically it just puts the camera to sleep when you press it and then when you press it again, it wakes it right back up. Now if for some reason you're wondering how come the video is not recording, you have no indication that it's recording, you may have to do an additional button press. And the button that you're going to press is OK at the very far right. So if you're not recording video, press this OK button. And as you can see right there, the video recording has started. You can press the OK button again to stop the video. But once the video is recording, so long as you don't stop it, it should start automatically the next time you turn your car on. So you won't have to worry about doing that anymore. But in case you run into that roadblock, that's how you can start the video. All right, so let's go over some more of these buttons here. Now, the first button right here is this arrow that's pointing towards the left. All right, so when you click this button, you see that it's going to switch between the two camera modes. You got a camera that's facing the street, and then you have this camera right here that faces you. You can see my camera right there. So when you press this button, it changes the view on the back of the camera. You press it again, it's very bright, but this is basically the front camera. You press it again, it's both cameras side by side. Press it again, sorry about that, press it again, and then it basically just swaps the image locations, press it again, and it goes right back to where it was in the beginning. So that's what that function does. But when you are recording, it records the front and the back camera at the same time. And when you put this SD card into your computer, you'll be able to find the footage for the front camera and the rear camera in different folders. So it's not going to look like this on the screen. They're going to be individual full screen videos. All right, so let's look at the next button, which is this arrow key that points to the right. And when you press that button, it mutes the microphone and it unmutes it. So you can see the microphone icon sort of in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So when I push it, you see that a line goes through the mic. I push it again, the line goes away. So if you don't want to record audio, you will press it so that that line goes through the mic. But if you do want to record audio, you press it so that the line is not through the mic. So that's what this button does. Now this next button here, M, that's for the menu, but it also has some other functions as well. So if you simply push this button, it's going to start to go through different modes. So this is a photo mode. If you wanted to take a picture with the dash cam, you can tell that it's in photo mode because of the little photo icon that's on the upper left hand corner of the screen. And when you push this again, it's now giving you the playback of all the videos that you recorded. So you can use these arrow keys to move through the various videos that are recorded. And then when you find a video that you might want to play back, then all you have to do is hit the OK button right there on the far right. You push that and then it starts to play. You want to stop it, push it again, and then it stops that playback. All right. So that's what this menu button does. And then you push it again and it goes back to real time. Now, the other thing about this menu button is that it functions differently if you're actually recording. So let me just start a recording right now. You see that I'm currently recording. If I push the menu button now, you'll see that a little lock icon appeared right there. 
And what that lock, lock icon does is it prevents this particular clip from being overridden. So if you see something out there on the streets or if someone grazes your car or whatever, and you wanna make sure that that footage is not going to go anywhere, then you press the menu button while it's recording and it's going to lock that file so that it does not get overridden. All right, and also when the video is recording, you can access the menu. So if I press and hold the menu button, nothing happens. See, so now you have to turn off the recording by pressing OK and it stops and then you press and hold the M button and this takes you to the menu. So here are some of the different menu options that you can select from. And remember, this is not a touch screen, so we can't scroll through it, but instead we'll just use these arrow buttons to move up and down. And then if we wanna select something, we just hit OK, the button on the far right. Okay, so now we're at resolution, we can hit OK, and then this tells us the resolutions that we can choose from. You pick which one you want, then you hit OK again. Go down one that gives you the image quality for photos, if you're going to take a photo with this. Then we have down the, the next option here is cyclic record. So basically it's asking how much time do you want to go by before the camera records a new clip? You can turn this off or you can go as high as 10 minutes. So when you look back on these files, they'll be in 10 minute increments if you choose the 10 minute mark, five minute increments if you choose five minutes, three minutes if you choose three minutes. Next is going to be some video quality settings so you can adjust the white balance, auto white balance, or you can just change it according to the day. Um, I usually just keep it on auto because you're going to be driving. You don't want to be fiddling with that. EV is exposure compensation, which basically uh, it's like a brightness setting. You know, how over or underexposed do you want the final image to be? Motion detection. Now, motion detection is something that's going to automatically start recording if it detects motion. So I'm going to show you that now. Let me turn that on and then I'm going to go back to the main screen just by pressing the menu button again. Now you see that we are recording automatically and I can stop this recording but it keeps going because it detects motion. If I could be completely still like right here and now I give it a shake you see that it starts recording again when it detects motion. So let me do that again. I'm going to stop it. All right. I'm not pressing any buttons. I'm just going to move it. And you see that it started up recording again. So that's the motion detection. And I'm just going to turn that off. Now going down here, this is the audio. This is for the microphone if you want to record audio or not. Down here is parking wake. And to be honest, I'm not too sure what parking wake does um, because I assume that that means that if something were to jostle your car, it'll wake the camera up and it'll start recording. But then that also means that there needs to be constant power running to the camera. And if your car is off, then it probably is not powering the camera. So honestly, I'm not too sure what parking wake is actually going to do. Um, the next option is the date tag. You can turn that on and off so that you can see exactly the date and uh, the date that things were going on. G sensor is whether the camera is going to respond to, let's say if uh, something were to shake your car and then the camera will be able to turn itself on and start recording. You see you have different levels of the G sensor. You have low, mid and high. Beep sound is if you want to turn off the beeps as you move through the menus. You can also adjust the time here. Auto power off. You can set the timer for that. One minute, three minutes, or just turn it off entirely. Change your different language settings. Most of us are just going to choose English. Um, so you have a flicker setting. You don't really need to worry about that. Fill light on, off, or auto. You don't have to worry about that either. Uh, there's a screensaver option. You can turn on the screensaver in these increments of three, five, or 10 minutes before the screensaver turns on. And then format erases everything off the memory card and reformats it. And then you have reset system, and then you have the version number of the software that's inside of this camera. So that is the entire menu system. 
and those are all of the buttons that you can actually press and access. While editing this, I did realize I forgot the big button that's the rectangle button next to the lens. So when you press that button, that activates a night vision feature for the camera that faces the cabin. So when you're driving around at night and you wanna have a better look at what's going on inside the car, you can press that button and it's gonna activate that night vision feature. Now, one thing that someone um, has pointed out, um, they asked about Wi-Fi. Here's the thing, as we just saw through all of the menus that we went through just now, there was no option for Wi-Fi, for a Wi-Fi setting. Um, but in the instruction manual, it does talk about an app that you can download and connect this camera to Wi-Fi. But honestly, you guys, um, just to be completely candid with you, even if it is possible to connect this camera to Wi-Fi, I personally would not do it because I looked at the app that they instruct you to download. And first, it's not, it doesn't look like it's in English. It looks like it's mostly in, in I'm assuming Chinese. It's not so easy to find in Google Play. It's got a really strange name. And, you know, I'm just not comfortable with downloading that kind of an app for this kind of a camera. So I personally would not recommend that you do that. But if you do, I believe there is a QR code that you can scan in the instruction manual that will probably take you to Google Play or the Apple App Store where you can download it. But it's just something that I'm not going to do. All right, so I think if you're gonna purchase this camera, then you use this to access your footage in a physical form by using this micro SD card slot right here. And if you need to know how do you actually look at your videos once you take this tiny micro SD card out of the camera, well, when you purchase one of these micro SD cards, there's a really, really good chance that it's also going to come with something like this. And this is a full size SD card adapter for a micro SD card. So these two go together and all you have to do is just put the little micro SD card inside of this adapter here. And then if you have an SD card slot on your computer, on your laptop or whatever, you can just put this directly in there. But if you don't have a slot where you can insert an SD card into your computer, because here's the opposite side, you can also pick up something like this. Now this is a USB stick and on the side, it has these options for a micro SD card or full size SD card. You can use either or. And so you can just put this inside and then you can insert this into your computer through the USB slot, which you surely have. And then you'll be able to access all the content on this micro SD card directly from your computer. And which is, that is the way that I recommend that you look at your footage. So I hope this video was helpful in helping you figure out how in the world do you operate this very popular dash cam from Timu. Um, it's really simple, all things considered, um, and it just serves a very basic purpose. So if you're looking for a super cheap dash cam that has video quality that's not great, but at the same time it's not horrible, but it's good enough to capture the moment, then this may be something that you may be interested in. And check the link in the description if you wanna learn more about it over on Timu. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll talk to you soon.